So I'm going to answer the question that I get so frequently about compounded GLP-1s, which is about dosing. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Tiffany. I'm a physician assistant and I've been working in internal medicine for a long time. I'm a huge advocate of GLP-1s to help people lose weight. So let's get into this. So standard GLP-1s are, are prescribed in milligrams, but compounded GLP-1s are often going to be prescribed in units. So this gets very confusing for patients and people often want to know what the conversion is. So let me explain. So let's use the example of terzepatide. So the starter dose of terzepatide, which is brand name Zetbound, is going to be 2.5 milligrams. So if you are prescribed brand name terzepatide, you go to the pharmacy, you get it in a pen form. The pen is an auto injector. So what that means is that you give yourself the injection, it gives you the entire amount at one time, and then you throw the pen away. All right, there's only one dose per pen. So you get four pens for the entire month because it's one dose in a week. And so the entire amount of fluid that's in that pen is gonna be injected into you at once. So the nice thing about that is you really don't have to do any math. It's really hard to mess that up. Now compounded medication is going to come to you in a vial and you're going to draw it up with an insulin syringe that looks like this. All right. Now, if you've never seen an insulin syringe, then I'm going to take this off so you can see it. There's a little bitty tiny needle on the end of this. A um, couple things to note about this is that this is in units and you're going to see on the side. I know it's, there we go. Um, it is marked off in ten, by tens and it goes all the way to a hundred. The other thing to notice about this insulin syringe is on the other side of it, it says one ml and that, that's important. That means that this entire syringe holds one milliliter of fluid. So we'll come back to that. So when you get a compounded prescription, um, you'll be told how many units you're going to draw up from a vial and then inject. So for the most part, it starts off at a very low amount, probably 10 or 20, and then you know, you'll increase your dose as, as tolerated. So, but a lot of people get confused because the branded will be milligrams, compounded is in units. So let's talk about why. So the first reason is because an insulin syringe is the tiniest needle that they make. So this is probably the most comfortable for the patient. So the problem is that it's not interchangeable needle. So you can't, a lot of syringes have an interchangeable so you can screw them on and off, but this one is not interchangeable. So if you accidentally bend this needle when you're trying to uh, get it in and out of the vial, you will need to very gently bend it back, push the medicine back into the vial and get yourself a new syringe and try again. Do not use a bent needle to inject yourself. Okay, here's the part where I need you to do, I need the math to math for you for a minute, okay? So let's talk about compounding. So when they compound a medicine, they are taking a powdered form of the medication, mixing it up for you, and then you're injecting it. So when they do that, they can do it in different concentrations, meaning that, let's take an example. So let's say you get compounded terzepatide, and that prescription comes to you and it says terzepatide 10 milligrams per ml, and that's what the prescription says. What that means in essence is that for every 10, for every one ml, okay, which let's go back to this because this, this is this syringe. If you pull up one whole ml of fluid would be 10 milligrams of terzepatide. Okay. If, if that was your concentration, now that's not going to be everybody's concentration. So this is just the example. Okay. So in our example, terzepatide was 10 milligrams per ml. So if we pulled up an entire syringe, of that concentration, we would have 10 milligrams. Okay. So that being said, okay, here's where I need the math to math for you. Um, what if we only pulled up 10 units? Okay. That would basically be one tenth of that syringe, meaning that that would be one milligram. Okay. And then two, 20, there we go. 20 units would be two milligrams and so on and so forth. So that is only if that concentration is 10 milligrams per ml. So it comes in different concentrations. So that's why it's very important that you pay attention to your prescription if you're getting compounded, how many units it's asking you to inject, okay? You're always gonna wanna use a insulin needle that has these um, marked off on the side and you always need it to say units. Okay. These are actually, you can purchase these over the counter. You do not need a prescription for these. You just go to the pharmacy. Generally, they're going to be behind the counter. You have to ask for them, but you do not need a prescription for these insulin syringes. So again, 
just be mindful that if you're on compounded, they're going to be in units. All right. You should not have to figure out your prescription. Okay. If you're getting this from a provider, your provider should give you some direction about how many units to use. Okay. So just be aware of that. Just know that it is not going to look like a prescription that is branded because branded is going to come in milligrams. So just be mindful of that. Just know that it's different, but it's okay. Okay. Because, um, the math still maths. Um, so if you have questions, if you have lost your coverage for a GLP-1 and you need coverage, um, there is a link in my bio where you should be able to get coverage for the GLP-1s compounded. So just click that link and hopefully you'll be able to get back on your meds. So, all right guys, if y'all have questions, drop them in the comments. Y'all have a good night.